Okay, so I was recently asked, why did I switch from sidereal Vedic astrology, the normal traditional way of doing it, to tropical Vedic astrology, which is a new movement uh, that was started mostly, although other people found this out independently on their own, um, this movement was started back around like 2007 or 2008, okay? So I'll tell you guys my, my story about it. Um, I started out studying astrology around 2006 and I first of course only knew about Western astrology because I was an American here in America. And then I got really deep into yogic meditation and got into Kriya Yoga. It's a really awesome meditation tradition. I teach meditation too if you're interested in that. But uh, so there was basically this, this guy named Ryan Kurzak. He's actually a well-known astrologer and yoga teacher now. I met him and I was doing meditation with him for six months to a year and I found out he was an astrologer. I said, okay, you read my chart. I was like, oh wow, this is really making a lot of sense. This is different, this is very in-depth. And you're, you know, this meditation, these yogis, wow, this must, they must really know the real astrology, right? So naturally, I kind of just like threw out what I knew about Western astrology and the tropical zodiac and just dove into sidereal zodiac and Vedic astrology and ooh, like this is the real zodiac and this is why we're better than everyone else because we use the sidereal. And there was all this like kind of elitist kind of attitude um, that, I, that the sidereal-ist people had at that time. And unfortunately, like Ryan said about himself too, like I was also kind of an India file, you might say, like just to just kind of naturally thinking like, oh, India is just all enlightened. They must all be enlightened over there. Blah blah. It was, couldn't be further from the truth in reality, but um, that that's kind of another factor. Um, just because something is ancient doesn't make it right, you know, doesn't make it correct. But it's easier to like give more weight and authority to things that are like, oh, this is some ancient tradition of ancient Indian astrology. They've been doing this on some mountain in the Himalayas since time began. And uh, that's just, anyone who's lived in India knows that that's just not the way it is. And those, there, please tell me where there is an unbroken astrology tradition that's gone on since ancient times. I looked, I wandered through India and searched for it personally. It's not, it doesn't exist now, unfortunately, sorry. When the British came in and took over, all the firstborn Brahmins who would have taught, been taught astrology just got jobs and went and worked for them, unfortunately. And they sold out their treasure for some British pounds, unfortunately. And then that's what's annoying is that so many Indians like to hate on us English people for wanting to get into astrology and give us all this... They, they accuse us of being colonialists, you know, like I might even get accused of being a colonialist in these comments because of saying that I do astrology different from the sidereal way. And it's like, look, y'all are the ones who sold out your own stuff. Y'all are the ones who, who, who let go of this tradition. You know, I don't, I don't want to be, no one's trying to point fingers here, but I'm just saying like those, that wasn't me then doing that. <laughs> so please don't blame me for that. I just love knowledge and I love truth and I want to, I don't care who, like whose ethnicity it was that conveyed the truth. I just want the truth. So there's this whole thing with Vedic astrology where it's like, you'll just, I'm sure you guys have to know what I'm talking about, where there's just this like elitist kind of vibe that is given or this like holier than thou vibe. And that is seriously the main problem with all of India in general is that it just tremendously suffers from this holier than thou vibe. Um, and as a result, it doesn't adapt to the new modern things as easily as like, say, Japan, which has a traditional culture that they preserve and yet embraces modernity and doesn't try to act holier than thou. Japan has its own problems too, though. We're not here to talk about that, though. No culture is perfect. Um, so, so yeah, I guess basically what I'm trying to say is first off, you cannot just think because something is a more ancient tradition it's actually better you need to actually try it out for yourself and when I actually tried out all the Vedic techniques I had learned for many years when I actually tried them out on the tropical zodiac they worked radically better like tremendously better like night and day difference where I was ha I had a nervous breakdown in 2012 because I had studied 
all the material I could find, every book on Vedic astrology that exists. YouTube videos didn't even exist at that time. It was only just like the same books. And I had a nervous breakdown because like even David Frawley's main book had typos throughout the entire book. It was just riddled with errors. It was just had it, so many inaccuracies. I was like, is this seriously the best astrology we can find? Like what is going on? I had a nervous breakdown on my birthday in 2012 and I prayed deeply to God to find a real teacher of astrology. Within a few months of that, I did find my real teacher um, of astrology. So, and his name is Ernst Wilhelm and he's the guy who really created the tr who really came up, who really went through the scriptures and realized like, oh my God, they weren't even doing sidereal zodiac, they were using the tropical zodiac. And he's the one who started this whole movement to get the tropical zodiac into Vedic astrology again. Um, many other people have talked about this and he's not the only one though. And I don't even like currently study with him. So I'm not trying, like there's just many, many different um, smart people who have pointed to this, but I just need to, I need to mention him because credit needs to be given where it's due. He did start this movement. There's another astrologer out there who's a tropical Vedic astrologer who wears all these robes and acts super holier than thou. And he pretends like he's the one who came up with this and he didn't. And he's just caused a lot of egotistical, like, you know, like cat fights in this Vedic astrology world with tropical and sidereal people. So all of us tropical astrologers kind of just try to leave him alone. I'm not going to mention my name, but he's the only guy who acts like he's holier than everyone and wears robes and gets all uppity about his Sanskrit and stuff. So you can tell who that is probably if you've been in this field for a while. Um, and so basically he and many people did find that, oh my God, when I actually use the techniques, like it, it does work radically better. These Vedic techniques, they do work radically better on the tropical zodiac. So it's hard to ignore, ignore that. If I test my students and get them to read a sidereal chart and then the tropical version of the person, the tropical chart they read will speak more to the truth of that person. Um, and then another thing that made me switch was that I realized like, wow, like most astrologers don't really know anything about astronomy. You know, like I talked to a sidereal astrologer who was trained with the ACVA um, the American College of Vedic Astrology charges like 200 or more an hour for a reading, very like trained in India, trained in Ayurveda in India, lives in California, and he could not tell me what the ecliptic was. I was talking about just astrological jargon. I was like, you know, it's so the ecliptic here and then on the winter. And then he was like, what do you mean the ecliptic? He literally said that. I was like, you don't know what the ecliptic is? You're an astrologer and you don't know what the ecliptic is what the fuck like this is the sidereal world that i saw at least at that time that, that was in like 2015 2016 maybe um but i've got many many instances of that um another important thing about the astronomy is that the sidereal zodiac implies its constellations that are creating the effects of nature and then they divide these constellations into 30 degree sections but these constellations are not even 30 degree sections at all like cancer is tiny and then like virgo spreads out across more than a whole sign leo is a massive one and then they overlap and so they just don't make sense as like the things to to frame your zodiac around these constellations because they're just shifting and they're overlapping and they're not even 30 degree sections and then we have stellar drift, you know, sh stars are constantly shifting or burning out or this or that. So why would the ancient Rishis have anchored their zodiac to a certain star? It doesn't make sense. And the star is so fucking far away. Forget my French. Um, and the, the tropical zodiac is based on the sun and earth relationship, which has been the same relationship since time began. And it's what creates the seasons. So spring starts the same day that spring started when the Rishis made this stuff. So it's clear that they were using the tropical zodiac. And it's also, you know, there were already, there are already schools of astrology in India that have always used the tropical zodiac. Um, the Tajika school, Tajika Jyotish, that comes from Tajikistan, which was Persian. It uses tropical zodiac and has always preserved the tropical zodiac in India. And that leads us to the other thing is like every other culture used a 12 sign zodiac with the same animals, Aries, Taurus, this, that, and they all did it tropical. 
how, like what, how does that make sense that only India is right and only India because they did it sidereally and attached it to their nakshatras? But it's like, if that's the case, then why would there have been these Tajika schools, which are basically like the same thing as Western astrology, ancient Persian astrology has just been preserved in India. And that's the real value and glory and beauty of India is that their devotion in their culture has allowed, has kept them preserving knowledge longer than any other culture. And that is truly why I love Indian culture is it's really just the last of the classical religions. It's the last of the astrological religions that is still living and being done. I'm Irish and German background um, and like Scandinavian, Northern European, all of my ancestors were doing this stuff, but almost all of that's been lost now. And this is also what's fascinating is, hmm, why is there such a phenomenon of Irish Americans getting obsessed with Vedic astrology in the 90s? Like all the people who led the Vedic astrology movement for America were Irish Americans like David Frawley, Dennis Harness, many, many others. It's because they were tapping into their ancestry and their culture, which was <clears throat> very, very similar, if not a branch off of the Vedic culture itself. That's a whole other video though, if you guys are interested in learning about the Irish and Vedic connections, you should read this article that David Farley wrote on that, or if just leave a comment, I can share a lot more on that, a lot more. I've been studying, I've learned a lot about that in recent times. There's just so much evidence of an ancient global astrological culture. Um, and when you study history, like academics will be like, no, these were the Phoenicians and these were the Scythians. And it's like, they weren't as divided as you might think is what I'm coming to find. Um, and a lot of times they almost, historians might almost be using all these different terms to almost mask this unity and to almost keep us from realizing this, you might even suspect. Anyways, um, <clears throat> when you learn about all these ancient cultures, you really do learn that like, oh my god, India was incredibly connected to Egypt, to Greece, to Rome, Rome Romaya Vishya or Roma Vishaya was the name of Rome in ancient times and the Shastras, like they had names for these places and they were traveling. Um, you, you learn more and more about ancient cultures and you see that like Europe and Greece and Egypt, all these cultures were interconnected and all these other ones used a tropical zodiac. So why would, why would India be using the same animals in their zoo, uh, their zodiac and not be calculated the same? It just doesn't make sense. Um, there's so much more interconnection and interconnectivity of these cultures than people want to believe. Um, clan MacLeod, this famous Irish clan, Clan MacLeod has a fairy flag made of silk that's dated thousands and thousands of years old, and silk can only be found in India or China. So these cultures were so much more intertwined. That's what I'm getting. It's basically Ir Irish culture and Persian Zoroaster, like the per the Persian cultures both of these might have been branches off from Vedic culture at some time but that's for a whole other video um, but you know Irish language all these things even their goddesses the Irish are the children of Danu Danu is literally a goddess mentioned in the Rig Veda okay moving on though um, many great astrologers and yogis have hinted at the tropical zodiac such as Sri Yukteswar in his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita he says he talks about the tropical the, the zodiac as being tropical. Um, Dandamis was this great yogi that Alexander the Great had heard of when he was invading India and he sent people out to find him and he sent someone out to bring Dandamis to him and there's this amazing tell, tell, retelling of this account that Yogananda gives in his autobiography of a yogi and this badass yogi Dandamis is like I'm content to sit here on my couch of leaves and if Alexander the Great wants me, he can come find me, but Alexander the Great doesn't know anything about this world. And he goes on and on saying how Alexander the Great doesn't even know that the sun's central course uh, through the center of the earth. And he's basically talking about the sun's movement through the chakras or the equinox and solstices. So even this yogi in ancient Greek times was talking about the tropical zodiac, you see, and not talking about the sidereal zodiac. You know, I feel like I didn't explain that as best. If you want to know about that, just read uh, Yogananda's chapter um, when he goes into like, he, oh yeah, it's when he returned to India, an idol in South India, I believe that's the name of the chapter, but there's a, there's a section of his book where he gives an unbelievable account from, a, from historians about Alexander the Great meeting yogis. And again, they imply tropical zodiac.
And so this is the other thing is that like nowhere in the Jyotish Shastras is it talking about using an Ayanamsha and making the zodiac sidereal. And if they really were using a sidereal zodiac, you'd think they'd be constantly saying like right away in the first chapter, like we aren't like the Greeks, we aren't like the Egyptians, we use, trop we use a, a sidereal zodiac. They don't say that anywhere. There's only a few points in all the all the Shastras where they mention Ayanamsha and you can tell that it's been like inserted in. Like in Parashara, he, in Briha Parashara, the Bible of, in, of Astrology, it does not say in the calculating of the Zodiac to use an Ayanamsha, only later on at different points, like in random chapters on Dashas, it'll say take the planet with Ayanamsha. Or like a few little things here that appear to be added in, but there is no, they're not they're not underscoring this. Like if they really did this differently from all the ancient cultures, this would be so underscored in their books and it's not. And in fact, the opposite is mentioned um, because there's a quote from Yavana Jataka where it talks about how like <clears throat> these barbarians and Greeks are like very well known in astrology and Yavana Jataka means the horoscopy according to the Greeks. So we were learning like the not we, they were, the Indian, the Vedic astrologers were learning from the Greeks. And there's another in Garga Samhita, it literally says, quote unquote, the Greeks are barbarians, yet the science of astronomy originated with them. For this they must be honored. So Sage, Sage Garga says that. Um, I mean, that's a pretty big deal, <laughs> you know? And... That's, and all these other cultures, these Greeks, and they all use tropical astrology. So it's really clear that the ancient Indians use tropical Vedic astrology. And it's also simpler. It's the first thing you create, and then you have to take away 24 degrees. But it, it's, that's not mentioned that much, as much as you'd think. So first you have to create a tropical zodiac, no matter what you do with astrology. And then you have like the Jaimini commentary. The best commentary on any astrology text I've ever read is by Professor A. V. Abhyankar, an unbelievable genius Sanskrit scholar who I refer to a lot in my courses. He did a prof he had such profound Sanskrit knowledge and he wrote a commentary on the Jaimini Sutras and he wrote another part of the commentary in Sanskrit so I can't even understand that because um, it's like I'm not that good. Most people aren't at, that good at Sanskrit. Um, but in his commentary, he talks about how Jaimini is emphasizing signs and sign aspects and all these things, and the logic behind it is the same logic of the sun's movement through the season. So he's like, he basically says that Jaimini was using tropical zodiac. Like, it's very clear to this scholarly academic without a lot of religious attachments. He just says, yeah, it's very clear that Jaimini was using tropical signs. Um, and Jaimini really does work best with tropical zodiac. And this is why most of the people that you try to learn Jaimini from aren't, they're not gonna teach you something that's unbelievable that makes you go from having no clients to being booked up six months out. When I learned the real Jaimini, I went from having no clients to being booked up six months out because that's how good it was. Like if you're doing real astrology and it's not blowing your clients' minds and making them cry like tears of catharsis, you're not doing real astrology. And that's the thing is like I really believe that's what astrology could deliver and I think that's why I cried and had nervous breakdown and that's why the gods brought me that higher teacher. Everyone's going to resonate with what they're satisfied with. And so you, if you're dissatisfied with the readings you've gotten and the level of intelligence you've gotten from astrology, be dissatisfied with that and don't be content with that and request the divine to bring you a higher quality of knowledge and you will actually get that. And this is the other thing is that the equinox and the solstices are intertwined with nature and the seasons. And Vedic philosophy is about worshiping nature. It's about being in harmony with nature. Nature is God and God is nature. Nature is the goddess. And so Vedic astrology when done sidereally is focusing on the way nature was 2000 years ago, dialing it back 23 degrees. Or it's about focusing on stars far away from nature sun and earth these are the intimate things and the moon like these are really up close to us and that's nature and that's why the, the tropical zodiac is probably the right zodiac for vedic for the vedic world because vedic world is about being in tune with nature and finally one final point 
the constellations are already factored in with nakshatras. So why the heck do we even need zodiac signs if we already have the nakshatras? When it's sidereal, I just never understood why we even have both if, if like Anuradha is always in the same part of the zodiac, you know? Why even deal with Anuradha? Why not just know this sign or, you know what I mean? Why do both? If the, if the signs are here and the nakshatras are actually always slowly moving behind them, that adds a tremendous amount more sophistication and explains why different yugas are the way they are. And this, like, this is what's crazy is that in the mundane books, they talk about how the star, the nakshatra that's on the vernal equinox determines like a lot of the mundane astrology of that age and that era. And what they're, that could, that, see if they're using sidereal, there would never be a different nakshatra on the equinox. It would always just be Ashwini. So they clearly weren't. See, they were clearly doing tropical. And then Varaha Mahira also has many references that would only make sense with tropical zodiac. And so a lot of sidereals go, oh, that's just Varaha Mahira astrology. That's just, that was just like nonsense Greek stuff. It's like, wait, what? He was like the King Arthur of ancient India. You can't just dismiss him because he lived in North India and there was like maybe more interaction with Greeks. That's a big stretch to dismiss someone like that. Um, and yeah, see the zodiac is all earthly creatures like a bull, a, you know, a ram, you know, a fish. So it's tied to the earth and the sun and the seasons. And the nakshatras are actually all related to deities. And this is why, again, the sidereal, I'm like always trying to tell people in the sidereal world, their understanding of nakshatras are always overemphasizing yonis and animals. Like, no, no, no. Nakshatras are kind of like the one thing you don't want to make animalistic. They're divine deity things. Let the actual zoo of animals, the zodiac, be the animals, you know? So they'll think of snakes and they'll think of like Mrigashira, which has a snake yoni. It's like, think of Scorpio, <laughs> the sign of snakes, you know? Or when they think of cats, they'll want to think of like, or like when they think of a tiger, they'll think of Chitra and not Leo. It's like, dude, just Leo, come on. Um, sometimes we don't see the forest for the trees is all I'm trying to say there. And so the nakshatras are deeply related to deities in the shastras. They just refer to them by their deity name. Like Kritika is just called Agni, you know, or things like that. So the nakshatras are related to deities and not animals. The zodiac signs are related to animals and earthly things and not deities. This makes perfect sense if the zodiac, the sun sign zodiac is meant to be tropical and the sidereal zodiac is meant to be or sorry, the nakshatras are meant to be sidereal. I hope that makes sense. You guys, feel free to share your feedback and your thoughts on it. I should say this, oh yeah, I should have said this first off. Let me just say that whatever zodiac you wanna do is fine. And you could still do great, get great results with the sidereal zodiac. I do not think that it is technically correct, but there's a lot more to, getting an astrology reading than being technically correct. Someone could have all the most technical correct, technical best calculations and still do a terrible job giving you a reading. And likewise, someone in India might have the wrong calculations, but still give you an amazing job doing a reading. And that's also why, possibly why Indian astrologers have specialized in so many different techniques in the more modern era, because maybe the signs aren't as reliable, they're only gonna be accurate like a third of the time. And so, that's maybe why they're using um, palm reading, you know, and nakshatra and, um, you know, different Prajna texts with techniques using an Aruda Lagna, not even using a real calculated sign Lagna or using omen reading, face reading, all these things, which I'm also very into. And so Vedic astrologer really is a, a Vedic astrologer can do an amazing reading for you still doing it sidereal and I've had my chart read by many sidereal people and it's done it been amazing and even when I had that reading from Ryan my first reading back in 2007 he was using sidereal one of the things he said was you have a career with public speaking and he didn't even know that I had spoken on Good Morning America to 11 million households he didn't even know that so it was like he nailed that right off the bat but when it comes, and like a lot of us Vedic astrologers are just using house stuff, right? And houses don't change either way. So this is why they've become masters of house placements and Western astrologers are like always off with their house stuff and not really able to predict as well. The Vedic astrologers are the best on the planet for predicting based on houses. I'll definitely give them that for sure. And you know, Upachaya, Dustana, they have like all these, Bhavat Bhavam, like all these different concepts of how to use houses 
that others we may have had in the Western tradition, but we've lost them. So there are great, there's great work to be done with both of them. Both systems could give you a terrible reading or an amazing reading based on the reader and based on your karma and what you're meant to get. And that's a big part of it as well. So I, you know, I'm not trying to tell anyone what to do. You guys should do whatever you think is best, but I was asked why I use tropical or Vedic or tropical or sidereal, and this is it. And that's also important. Don't say like, oh, he's using Vedic when you're referring to sidereal because that actually just shows you aren't very well educated on the topic because a lot of the Vedic astrologers don't use sidereal like I just made a case for. Uh, oh, I didn't even mention this one, Prabhupada, Swami Prabhupada, when he described his placements, he described them tropical. So like the day he was born, the astrologer who did his chart, uh, the guy Prabhupada who, leads the Hare, who led the Hare Krishna movement, his astrologer was using tropical because the placements he gave could only be seen with the tropical zodiac on that day. So anyways, there's a huge amount of um, evidence for using the tropical zodiac in India and that it was the original zodiac of the Rishis and this is why I hate to say it but if you a lot of people that come to me who've gotten readings in India from traditional Vedic astrology India have had not good results and I think that this is a big part of why um, but it'll be a long time before like the classic like temple astrologers in India start to switch because they're just so tradition and devotion oriented and again that is the best part about India that's why they've kept all these books in in Europe, you know, we burned all these books or they're rotting in the Vatican or somewhere. So overall, devotion is the most important thing. Um, but every now and then you have to, as we're going into this, this, this era we're in now, we need to really like think scientifically and calculate and research and think for ourselves and not just blindly trust what the guru says. Or in spirituality, if it's a perfect master, yeah, go ahead and blindly trust it. But with astrology and these worldly, this is a little bit.